Hello, and welcome to our discussion on financial reporting. And this, in this session, I would like to recap the discussion that we had in the session number one, where I introduced the course on financial reporting. So I'll pick up some important aspects discussed in a class and elaborate some of them. So the accounting course for our session, the way we define accounting will be as a process of measuring and converting the business decisions into financial state. I'd like to reiterate that. We would not like to stress on the rules of debits and credits for recording purpose. We would like to see accounting more as a principles or the science of measurement and converting and measuring the business decisions into the financial statements. So therefore, for accounting for us is a process of measuring and converting the business decisions into financial statements. So what we expect during this course is understand the business decisions observe the business decisions, classify the business decisions into financing decisions, investment decisions, operating decisions, and identify the financial items in those decisions and convert them into financial statements. Understand the business decisions, identify and measure the business financial items and convert the business decisions into financial statements. The business decisions, as I mentioned, are classified both in finance and accounting into three categories, financing, investment, and operating. And all the financial items that you come across in the course of accounting and also, of course, in finance can be classified into these five categories, assets, liabilities, equity, incomes and expenses. So almost all items that you come across will fall under these five categories only. And all these items will find a place in the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement and the statement of changes in equity. Though the focus of our course is a listed company, but this broad principle or the more model of accounting is every business decision will involve financial item and all the financial items will find place in financial statement. It will apply to other organizations too, business or non-business also. And uh, so let us examine these five items and examine what are these business decisions. And then we get into the financial statements as we move along. So in the first session, we try to understand these business decisions and financial items. So let me take some examples to explain these business decisions. Um, this I picked up from the recent newspapers. BSNL launched another recharge plan for 399. That's what I said. Keep a watch on the decisions, you know, in the newspaper, news articles, uh, news channels. You see the business decisions happening. So try to pick them up. So BSNL launching another recharge plan. Huh? It's, a, it's a new product. It's launching a new product with a different price. So with a validity of some features of pricing to pick up the market, to pick up the market, okay? So therefore, this decision is actually, can be classified more as a um, operating decision. So observe the decision and then take, understand the impact of that and then classify. 
So this is a BSNL is this decision to re to launch a new plan can be seen as an operating decision. Whereas Volvo and Aisha Group in the last week announced a hundred crore deal under which their equal joint venture commercial vehicle will buy a Swedish group's bus decision, bus division. And this is a investment decision because they're actually coming together to take over another business. So this I'll put as a operating decisions and this I'll put as an investment decision. So, so I hope you're observing that. Uh, the companies don't classify, they just take decisions. But for doing accounting and understanding the impact of the decision, try to, you try to classify. They will not say, the companies will not say that, okay, we have taken OD, ID, and MD. It's your job. Similarly, uh, in the near, uh, maybe in the month of March, the SBI card and payment services limited, which uses the SBI card, issues SBI card, which is a subsidiary of SBI, made an initial public offer of equity shares of face value of 10 at a market price, at a price of uh, 755, at a price of 755 per equity share. In the process, they raised 10,340 crore. Okay, that's a, so it is a, this is, this can be called as a D. So, so therefore, you pick up a newspaper and observe the decision, go to the company side and observe the various decisions that a company that you would like to understand or the company that you would like to work and see their decisions and try to classify them into these three categories. Because this classification has some impact on your recording and reporting and measurement. So the first job or the first expectation is observe the business decision happening all around you. Try to classify them into FD, ID, and OD. That's the first thing to do. Then understand the financial items. Now these financial items, as I mentioned, will all the decisions will involve these items. And these items are defined um, in the conceptual framework uh, issued by the Institute of Chartered Accountants for preparing the financial statement. Every country's professional body issues a conceptual framework for preparing the financial statement and they define the financial items. So these five items, which I'll explain now, are defined by the conceptual framework. But unlike any other science subject, you know, there is subjectivity also. That is where we often say that the flexibility given in accounting may be sometimes misused. Right? We'll, I'll develop that later. So the items as per the conceptual framework, the first item is asset. The asset is anything, as I mentioned in the class, anything which has the ability to generate future cash flows. And the conceptual framework says the future economic benefits, that is the cash flows in an asset, may flow to the enterprise in number of ways. Huh? How will they come? For example, they can be used together or individually in production. Okay, maybe raw material, maybe, material, maybe the machine, maybe building. So therefore these are used either individually or in combination to generate, create the wealth. They can be exchanged for other assets. Okay, I can I can exchange my old laptops with some new laptops, old laptops with something else. So they can be exchanged, but they can also be used to settle a liability. If I'm having a, a loan on my balance sheet from my friend or my sister concern, so then I can transfer some of my assets to reduce my liability. Or the cash can be distributed among the owners. So therefore asset, has several uses. But the minimum definition that we expect you at this stage to understand that anything which has the ability to generate economic benefits in the future. If they lose that ability to generate the future cash flows or future economic benefits, they will become loss or non-performing assets. 
these most of these assets you know may be having physical form like land building plant machinery however physical form is not essential for existence of an asset that means there can be tangible assets there can be intangible assets like patents okay like copyrights you know software so these are the assets these are also called assets because they have the ability to generate future economic benefits so assets can be tangible assets or intangible assets so the asset is one of the important components of the financial items or any business for that matter because you deal with assets to generate future cash flows so that is one of the important financial items then the next item as we mentioned here is a liabilities liabilities as i mentioned in the class is the obligations of the firm an essential characteristic of a liability is that enterprise has a present obligation not an obligation which may arise in the future if an obligation will arise in the future then it is not an obligation in the present it may be called a contingent liability that we will discuss later so therefore essential characteristic is that an enterprise has a present obligation the obligation is a duty or responsibility to perform in a certain way maybe to render service maybe to pay back the loans maybe to pay interest and these obligations are legally enforceable so you are you are you are bound by that and these are either contractual or they are statutory so obligations are normally contractual obligations or statutory obligations and when you meet those obligations the settlement of obligations can happen can can occur in number of ways you pay cash you give assets you provide services you replace one obligation with another obligation okay you have high cost debts you transfer that bring new loans and pay off the loans conversion of um, obligations into owners money right you we will see several such examples that where the bonds and debts are converted into equity so settlement of obligation payment of obligation can happen several ways okay so therefore the second important item in the financial items list is a liabilities the third one is an interesting term equity in fact the focus of our class will be around equity of because uh, generally in finance and accounting we try to um, bring or keep the shareholders perspective more than any other stakeholder so equity is a shareholders money equity for a listed company because our focus is listed company is a residual interest in the assets after meeting all obligations so therefore e is equal to a minus l assets minus liability that means if the business is closed today all assets are sold and the money realized first will be given used to pay off the liabilities statutory and contractual then any money available is given to the shareholder therefore they are called the residual the owners therefore they are called the risk takers the funds or equity consists of what equity consists of the owner's money that money contributed by the owner and the profit generated by the business which is the reserves okay so this technical terms of reserves will will develop as we move along but for the time being we can say that equity consists of the capital plus reserves or equity is equal to assets minus liabilities so the definition of equity is actually the residual claims of equity of the shareholder therefore as i mentioned i would like to reiterate that equity holders are considered to be the major risk takers of the firm so e is equal to a minus l which tells us about the residual nature and e is equal to capital plus reserves which tells us about 
the money contributed by the business, money contributed by the owner, and money generated by the business, which is profit. The business generates money for the shareholders. So the profit belongs to the shareholder. So if I put them all this, all these three together, I'll say that assets is equal to equity plus liabilities, right? Assets is equal to, that means whenever a business purchases an asset, so they can be funded by equity or liabilities. Normally in a business, it is a combination of equity plus liability. So if you, if you, if you go back to this decision here, okay? This decision of SBI cards, they're out raising money through equity. That means money to be contributed by the potential shareholder. So that is a financing. What will they do with that money? They can use that to strengthen the business, expand the business, create new technology. So that is the application of that money that they have raised. So asset, liability, equity are three important items in the list of the um, financial items. The other two, which more a flow, you know, they're regular incomes and expenses. So just like A is equal to E plus L, incomes and expenses will also give us something interesting for us. Income is the definition of income includes both the revenue and gains. The revenue comes from your day-to-day -day operations. If Tata Steel sells steel, so that is a revenue for Tata Steel. Okay, if XIMB collects fees from the students, that is the main revenue for the main activity. And it also includes gains in the sense that I may be having some old assets, old machines, old investments, so I can sell them and make um, profit out of it. Okay, that will be also included in the definition of income. The word income, uh, as we move along, you'll see various facets of income. Okay, uh, so the revenue uh, can have different names, you know, sales, fees, interest, dividends, royalties, rent, depending on the nature of the business. For a bank, the main income is the interest. For a consultancy company, the main income is the fees. For a trading company, the main income is the sales. For an investment company, the main income is a dividend. For a college or an academic institute, the main income is the fees. For a real estate business, the main income is a rent. If I'm a consultant and I have some design, some software, then my main income may be royalty on that. So different firms, different companies, based on their business will have different types of incomes. And uh, it's important to remember this, you know, though at present you may not immediately appreciate that. The incomes include some unrealized gains. Unrealized gains means let us say that you have purchased the shares of Reliance today and Reliance shares price goes up. So tomorrow when you prepare the financial statement, the difference in the price that you purchase at which you purchase and the price at which prevailing on the date of financial statement, though you have not sold, it's still considered to be gain and that is called unrealized gains. So, so therefore, incomes are the main activity for which the business runs, okay? And to generate this income, you have to incur some expenses. So expenses are those that arise in the ordinary course of business, okay? So salary paid, rent paid, electricity paid, these are all the um, expenses which are necessary to earn income. And these are the assets which are necessary to earn income. Because assets are there, there has to be sources, which is equity and liability. So everything in the business rotates around these incomes. You, know, you do business because you want to generate income for the shareholders. So, so these are the five items defined by the conceptual framework. And so therefore these five items will be there in our conversation, throughout our conversation, 
And if I now just put them together, so incomes minus expenses is equal to profit. Okay, incomes minus expenses is equal to profit. Assets is equal to E plus L, and I minus E is equal to profit. Okay. So, so let me go back to the model once again. The model therefore now makes sense, you see. Observe the business decisions, identify these assets, and then convert them into the financial state. But this entire process, this entire process of measuring, classifying, then converting them into financial statement is not arbitrary. You know, is not arbitrary. It is based on uh, certain principles, and these principles are called generally accepted accounting principle, popularly known as GAAP, generally accepted accounting principle. As I mentioned in the class, you know, so um, the GAAP consists of is, is a package. You know, is a is a package of several. Um, rules, regulations, um, which affect and influence the accounting. So what are they? And these are concepts and convention, which are the basic principles which governs the very subject of called accounting. And these are, these are universally accepted all over the uh, world. Uh, and so in the next, as we move along, we'll pick up the concepts and conventions one by one. There are half a dozen concepts and conventions. Accounting standards. The accounting standards are the principles of measurement generally. And each country's professional body um, issues those accounting standards. I'll elaborate accounting standard in a minute. The provisions of the Companies Act in India, the Companies Act governs companies, even listed companies are governed by them. And one of the important things that Companies Act's influence on accounting is the way the financial statements are presented. So one is a measurement governed by standards. Presentation is to some extent governed by the schedules of the Companies Act. Similarly, some of the relevant provisions of income tax will also have an effect on the company. SEBI's regulations, because we are talking about the listed companies, so some of the provisions of SEBI's regulations, some regulations will influence the financial reporting. Similarly, RBI's regulations will definitely affect all the banking. The bank's financial statements are governed by Companies Act as well as the RBI principles. But if similarly, if you are examining an electricity company, NTPC for example, NHPC for example, so they will be governed by the Companies Act, as well as the accounting rules given by Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, our respective state electricity regulatory commission. So therefore, when you pick up the nature of a company, a banking company is governed by Banking Companies Act, as well as the Banking Regulation Act, as well as the RBI. If it is a power sector company, then Companies Act, Electricity Act and CERC regulation. If it is an insurance company, then insurance companies will also be governed by Companies Act and Insurance Regulatory Development Authority, IRDA's regulations related to accounting will be affected, will be influenced. So therefore, uh, all these provisions are together can be put under a broad term. So when you want to understand an Indian company, you should know that the financial statements are not done arbitrarily. The annual reports are based on certain principles, and these principles are coming from all these concepts, conventions, standards, acts, regulations, commissions, statements, and all. So as I mentioned, let me, let me spend a minute on accounting standards. The accounting standards that we are going to use in our class, accounting standards that we are going to use in our class uh, will be INDAS. They're called Indian Accounting Standards, popularly known as INDAS. INDAS were issued by the Central Government of India. 
under the supervision and control of Accounting Standard Board of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India in consultation with the National Advisory Committee of Accounting Standard. So therefore, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, um, uh, we are using India's because we are talking about the companies only. And, uh, and because we are talking about the companies and that to listed companies, so for us, what is important is the INDS. INDS is applicable to us because for our class, are relevant for our class, because we are talking about listed companies, all listed companies are required to follow INDS. If it is not a listed company, an unlisted company, if the net worth of that company, that means the equity is more than 250 crore, they are also required to follow INDS. Though in principle, we may not use unlisted companies, but be aware that for an unlisted company, also INDS are required. Banking companies, government has postponed the applications. And also, we, as I mentioned in my class, maybe we are not going to pick up the banking companies in the first term. So for us, the focus is listed companies. And because the focus is listed company, we are going to use India's throughout the, as and when required, will fall back on accounting standard. What are those accounting standards? That the accounting standards are used for in all other cases. What does that mean? All other cases means if they are listed, uh, of course, India's will apply. But if they're not listed and they're less than 250 crore net worth, there you'll see accounting standard. And in, 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 in a simple layperson, layman's, language i'll call this new okay uh, you don't come across this in textbook as new standard but just for the our own clarification and put this as old and new so therefore for our class we will focus on the old uh, the new accounting standards because our focus is the listed companies okay but if you want if you are picking up a company which is not listed and it is below 250 crore and you want to examine absolutely most welcome but in that case we would like to see the relevant accounting standard though at a very broad level at, 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 at the conceptual understanding there's not a big difference some principles of measurements are changed in in days and accounting standard so for all our classes our focus will be in AS only okay in days Unless I mentioned specifically that we are getting into the old accounting standard, all our conversation will be around INDAS. As we move along, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what is this INDAS is all about, okay? So before I close, uh, before I close, so I would like to mention something important for us, which will define our, the, subsequent classes. This entire process of converting, measuring, and then converting the business decisions into financial statement, we can explain through the rules of debits and credits. However, we are not going to use those rules. What we will try to do, we'll understand this process through a framework of accounting equation. And what is that accounting equation? The accounting equation, as I mentioned already, the accounting equation for us is A is equal to A is equal to E plus L. A is equal to E plus L. So therefore, we will understand this process, this model. For me, that model is very important. For our class, for first few classes, I'll keep on mentioning this, that this model is very important. This process of converting and measuring these decisions into converting them into financial statement is governed by GAAP and we'll understand this, this process of measuring and converting through the lens of accounting equation. And the last but not the least, this process is governed by GAAP. However, there are lots of gaps in the GAAP. And the gaps means the inbuilt flexibility in the GAAP. And a good analyst will not only understand the gap, is expected to thoroughly understand the gap and also the gaps in gap. 
if the gaps in the gap are misused by the management of the company, then that will become accounting scam or accounting um, fraud. Sometimes they're also called creative accounting. Sometimes they're also called earnings management. So therefore, first understand the gap and uh, then you yourself will be in a position to observe the gaps in the gap. But our focus continues uh, on the definition of accounting is understand the business decisions, identify the financial items, measure them, convert them into financial statements. Okay, thank you very much.